I want to find the integral of square root 1 plus sine x dx. First thing I'm going to do is multiply by square root 1 minus sine x. So you can think of this as like the conjugate. And now I can rewrite this as square root 1 minus sine x in the denominator. And I'm going to multiply the 1 plus sine x, 1 minus sine x, inside the square root. Since they're both in the square root, we can multiply it inside the square root. And now we have a difference of two squares. We have a plus b times a minus b, which will give us a squared minus b squared. And here a is 1 and b is sine x. So we'll have square root 1 minus sine squared over square root 1 minus sine x dx. One minus sine squared can be rewritten because sine squared plus cosine squared is one. That means one minus sine squared will be cosine squared. So this whole thing can be rewritten as cosine squared. And then we'll be taking the square root of cosine squared, which is going to be absolute value of cosine of x. So just to make things work out nicely, I'm going to assume that x is in the first quadrant, so from 0 to pi over 2. That's going to allow us to remove the absolute value, because cosine is going to be positive there, so we no longer need the absolute value. So we have um, cosine in the numerator, and then square root 1 minus sine x in the denominator. We're going to make a substitution. We're going to let u equal 1 minus sine x. So du will be negative cosine x dx. So the denominator is just going to be square root of u. The numerator, we have a cosine x dx. And here we have a cosine x dx. So I'm going to move the negative over. So that will just be negative du, which can be rewritten as putting the negative on the outside and u to the negative 1 half. So that will just be negative u to the 1 half. And then we're going to be dividing by a half, which is the same thing as multiplying by 2. And then don't forget to add the constant. And then u, we said, was 1 minus sine x. So we're going to plug in 1 minus sine x, put in the square root, and then plus c. And that's my integral. Let's look at another integral. I'm going to have e to the x times natural log of x plus 1 over x dx. There's two ways to do this. First I'm going to show you the shortcut and then I'm going to do it the longer way. So for the shortcut I'm going to multiply e to the x to both of these. So I get e to the x natural log of x plus e to the x over x. Actually, we're going to write it as e to the x times 1 over x. Now, we can think of this as a product rule. So let's say we had two functions, took the derivative, and got this as the answer. So the question is, what was what is u and v? Well, you know the product rule would just be u prime v plus u v prime. So let's take a look at this. So e to the x would 
probably go with e to the x. And natural log of x, well, that has to be going with 1 over x. So what's the connection here? e to the x and e to the x, they're their own derivatives. So like, if you take the derivative of one, you get to the other, and vice versa. But what about natural log of, uh, natural log of x and 1 over x? Well, we know that the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. So we can think of this as u, and this is u prime. Or actually, let's use v just to make it simpler. We'll think of this as v. This will be v prime. And just, and then e to the x, you know, it doesn't matter the order here, but we're going to put it as u prime and u. Just so it, it matches up with this. You know, we have u prime v plus u v prime. So that matches completely. And we know that this is the derivative of u times v. Well, u, we said, is e to the x. v is ln of x. So we're going to be taking the derivative and then the integral of this. Notice that the derivative and the integral cancel each other out. So you're just left with e to the x natural log of x. And because it's a integral, we're just going to add the constant. So that would be our answer. Now let's do it the long way. We have e to the x times natural log of x plus 1 over x dx. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. So that'll be natural log of x minus 1 over x. I'm going to get e to the x. And then here it's difference of two squares. So it's just going to be natural log squared minus 1 over x squared over natural log of x minus 1 over x dx. I'm going to combine. So I'm going to put this all under one fraction. So I'm going to put the numerators of fraction, denominators of one fraction. So natural log squared minus 1 over x squared as a fraction. I'm going to multiply x squared and x squared. So I get x squared natural log squared minus 1 over x squared. And natural log x minus 1 over x is going to be the same thing, except there are no squares. So just x ln of x minus 1 over x. And that's going to go in place of what's in the parentheses. So let's rewrite this as e to the x. And then it's going to be x squared ln squared x minus 1 over x squared. And then x ln of x minus 1 over x. And that's dx. We have a x squared and an x here. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by x over 1. Because really, you have x over 1 over, and then over x over 1. That's just going to cancel each other out. So I'm allowed to do that. That's going to go away. This exponent is going to go away. So I have e to the x times x squared ln squared minus 1 over x over x ln of x minus 1 dx. Now, this factor is going to come up here because I'm dividing by x ln x minus 1, which is the same thing as multiplying by the 1 over that. So I'm going to rewrite this. this and now I can f factor out the numerator so 
you can think of this as a squared minus b squared, where a is the x element of x, b is the one. And we know that the way to factor this is a minus b times a plus b. So that's just going to be x ln of x minus 1 times x ln of x plus 1. And the denominator, we're going to have the same thing as before, dx. Now, x ln of x minus 1s are going to cancel. I'm going to be left with e to the x times x ln of x plus 1 over x. We're going to break this up into two fractions. So we have x ln of x plus, sorry, x ln of x over x plus 1 over x dx. x is going to cancel. And now I'm going to distribute out the e to the x. So break this up into two different integrals. We're going to have e to the x ln of x, and then e to the x over x dx. Now we're going to do some uh, integration by parts. We're going to let u be natural log of x, dv be e to the x. And the reason I'm going to choose u as natural log of x is because if I left it as dv, I'm be integrating uh, ln of x, and that's really a pain. So I don't want to do that. It's easier to let it be uh, u. Okay, so we do uv is natural log of x times e to the x. So I'm just going to put it in front minus now integral v du e to the x times 1 over x. So we'll just put it as e to the x over x. So that's just this part right here. Then we apply the integration by parts. But we also have this here. So that's going to come down here as integral e to the x over x dx. And now, thankfully, these are going to cancel. So you just have e to the x, l of x. And because this is a integral, we want to include the plus c. So that is our final answer.